People generate a huge amount of data every day. Data of all sorts, from where you pick your groceries up to how you spend the money that's in your bank account. And the need for sorting all of this information is expected only to move in one direction. And that, of course, is up. Forecasts Editor-in-Chief Angie Lau has been catching up with Clara Tsao at Phil Lisbon to talk about this insatiable demand for data and find out what Filecoin is doing about it. Clara, there's a lot of news coming out of Filecoin Lisbon, but I want to ask you about a bigger issue here, which is the 200 trillion gigabytes. I think that's what, 200 million petabytes. Peta- peta- I can't get the math right, but it's a lot of data that is swirling in the world. And a lot of the storage capacity that we have is very much centralized. And I want to understand a little bit more how decentralized storage actually might be a potential solution. Absolutely. Um, So as you might know, there's over 200 zettabytes of data potentially available by 2025. Um, according to most market reports, and 80% of that is actually driven by large enterprises. And so if you think about the large companies say Amazon, Microsoft, Google, they own most of the world's data. And what we're trying to do here is really think about data as a distributed resource that everyone should have access to and can come from all parts of the world. And so we created the Decentralized Storage Alliance together with Protocol Labs, AMD, uh, Ernest & Young, as well as the largest storage hardware provider in the world, Seagate. And for me, I'm most excited about really three major things. Number one is that we're seeing increased demand from enterprises wanting to have decentralized data. In fact, a recent report um, said over 90% of enterprises today are looking for a decentralized solution. We also are hearing that today enterprises really want geographic distribution when it comes to where their data is stored. And so if you imagine uh, today's data being in one data center, people want redundant copies of it and they want it geographically dispersed. So there's no single point of failure. And then number three is um, they definitely are looking at technologies like ourselves uh, to be a great resource for that. So Filecoin, today we have over 16 exabytes of available storage. We are the leading cloud provider um, for storage and Web3 and also bringing on a lot of Web2 clients along the way. If you guys remember just one year ago, October 6th, Facebook had a massive outage. People couldn't log in, businesses couldn't use it. And in fact, $60 million of revenue was lost that day. So this is kind of the importance of making sure that for companies all like large and small, that we can have protection in, in, in data, and there's no better solution to that than a decentralized data uh, network like Filecoin and also the incredible community that's building it with us. I just want to share one stat with you that I thought was really interesting. Cloud adoption among enterprise is still only up to 15% of uh, IT spending after 16 years. So this is the private enterprise side with centralized cloud storage. What are the challenges for decentralized storage providers like Filecoin as we ramp up to the future? Does this need to be more of a decentralized, a more public movement here? Yeah, we in fact are trying to get as many storage providers on our network as possible. And we actually just celebrated this week Filecoin's second birthday. So in just two years, building up 16 exabytes of available storage through our network and continuing to grow. Um, I think that's pretty incredible, but most of these enterprises are and storage providers we're working with, they're stepping up. They want to provide the support because you can imagine a decentralized network, one of the challenges is you can't just call a one single hotline when th- something happens or you can't understand resources. And we, we actually argue that this is even better. You now have 4,000 people all around the world that will help support you, uh, motivated to, and they're creating resources with each other. We saw the opportunity when the open source movement started for a community of developers to co-build technology together. And I can't imagine an even better system when we have um, a community of storage providers, experts on storage, really thinking about how we can build and build better than just one centralized place for that. And before we go, I gotta I gotta ask you about this because it, it just, it's so obvious that this is the future of work. You know, when you have so many developers and so many partners coming together in one place, where where do you see this going in 2023 as you build up the projects? But also, what does this mean in a post-COVID world? 
Yeah, well, during COVID, one, one thing that we absolutely did see was more and more use of data. And data is not going away. People are crazy about crypto, but my favorite thing is data is the most important currency of our time. And being able to actually get data that you need in the time you need it, but also make it affordable is the most critical thing out there. And Filecoin, for us, one of our biggest missions is to preserve humanity's most important information. So we want to make data not only accessible, but also affordable. So we're at around one one hundred the cost comparable to AWS for storage. And we're also thinking about nonprofits, public institutions. Think about libraries today uh, in the digital world that need data to be able to upkeep information that's critical for every citizen in every country to access. And that, to me, is so important. And unfortunately, when you have monopolized data uh, in the hands of certain uh, cloud providers, this becomes really, really hard for the price to be controlled. And we're already seeing a number of public institutions, universities, not be able to save important scientific yeah. data because of how high the cost is. When you're doing genome sequencing, you're running it through major databases, that's so expensive. It's only going to get worse unless there's a solution. And I'm glad that there is a lot more technology optionality out there. It's important not only for, uh, you know, enterprise, it's important for everyone. It's our own data at, at risk here. Absolutely, and we already have already started to work with a number of institutions from MIT to Stanford to governments like New York City's Open Data to really pilot and think about what the future could be. And we are just getting started, so we can't wait for more. Thank you so much, Clara Zhao here. We're at Filecoin Lisbon, Phil Lisbon, as it were, signing back to you from Portugal to Hong Kong. And you can catch even more blockchain developments at Phil Lisbon's Summit. That is on until November the 4th.